Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Norristown High School and tonight's first round Division I PIAA contest between the Penwood Patriots and the Norristown Eagles. My name is Joe Hyland. My partner is Bob Koch. These are the playoffs. Playoff basketball is what high school basketball is all about. This is what the youngsters have been working for since the very first practice in late October. The Eagles are playing their best basketball of the year. They are peaking at the right time. They ended their regular season with three impressive victories over Coatesville, Hatboro Horsham, and of course their stunning 57-56 upset win over conference champion uh, and state power uh, Cheltenham. The Eagles are 15-6, 11-4 in the tough Liberty Division. The sophomores right now are playing like seniors, and thanks to Coach Evans and, and Coach Johnson, uh, the Eagles bench is deep and talented and more than ready to uh, step into the breach should any of the uh, starting five uh, falter. The Eagles game, offense and defense, all starts with uh, their splendid uh, premier uh, point guard, Willis Gardner. Bob, if there is a better player in District 1, a, a better all-around player in District 1, we have yet to, uh, to see him. Uh, Gardner has been a relentless defender, and he has been a dangerous offensive threat, both inside and with his uh, jump shot. There will be a lot of pressure on the young man this evening, but I'm sure he will respond to it. Penwood is coached by Rap Curry and comes into the game with a record of 11 and 12. They finished second in the Delvell Conference. You may remember Rap Curry as a player who led uh, St. Joseph's University to a few top flight seasons uh, a few years back. Consistent with Coach Koch's theory about uh, a team having two and uh, two scores, uh, that's the, exactly the situation with Penn Wood. They have 6'5", Edward Millard, who is putting in 23 points a game, and guard Kyle Finley, who is scoring 15 points a game. The Eagles have encountered some taller squads during the year. I recall Lancaster, McCaskey, Coatesville, and of course Downingtown, and the Eagles stepped up and won those three games. But it will be interesting to see how Mike Buckley and Kenny Witter respond to the inside presence of 6'5", Eddie Millard. Now to bring us up to date with regard to Norristown High School, Bob Koch. Joe, there's a lot of things that we can address tonight. First of all, if you start with the coaching, uh, Rap Curry is and did work under Coach Phil Martelli at St. Joe's, played for him at St. Joe's, so he has that pedigree behind him. Uh, Binky, has, Binky Johnson has seen them play twice, and he said their coaching is excellent. They're very aggressive. They're very scrappy. It's a very disciplined team. And one of the interesting comments was that they're very similar to us. They will press with a 1-2-2. Two, two. They will press a lot during the course of the game. They work an inside game. What you mentioned a couple moments ago, the one player is averaging 23 a game. The second, he is their first and second option for them. He's both a, an inside player and a perimeter player. And he said to me, he's better inside side than the player who we saw recently, which was the Coatesville player, the kid that's going to uh, Florida A&M, right. number 52. Razzle. Right. Better player than him on the inside because he's both inside and out. Their second option, as you said, is averaging 15, 17 a game. So with those two players, it's almost 41 a game. Their third player, he said, is an up and down player, kind of uh, not as predictable or as reliable. So it is primarily a two-player team that does the bulk of the scoring. So that's an issue. Whether Norristown can stop someone 6'6", six, six, that's 260, and is a force inside is going to be a serious concern. There are keys to this game. Um, I talked to uh, Jim Serratore prior to, and he gave you the stat sheet. We're yes. shooting 58% from the foul line this year. That's going to be a concern. Rebounds will be a concern. Um, possession of the ball will be a concern, particularly since these both teams press how much we control the ball, how many turnovers we have will be a big issue in this game. Staying the, out of foul trouble Out as well, of foul though. trouble. The bench is stronger for yeah. Norristown than it is for Penwood. However, 
Uh, I think the concentration, perhaps the nervousness may be an issue with this game. The fact that we have some young kids will be an issue. Um, how well they handle the ball from, from beginning to end. There's a lot of variables in this game, Joe. And, and one of the things that he pointed out to me, the, the record with Penwood, Penwood is very deceptive. The conference they played in, they pick up four losses automatically from Glenn Mills and Chester, and they almost beat Glenn Mills. He said they, they were down by 20, some came back and were within a point and had a chance to win it. So there's four losses right from the get-go with that kind of talent competition. So that 12 losses is very deceptive. He said they're playing in a very tough division, and uh, it's going to make it very difficult for us tonight. I, I know up front, this is going to be a tough game for us. Bob, you've been through the crucible of uh, as a coach of uh, playoff competition. What do, you, what do you tell the youngsters uh, at a time like this? Do what you do what you've done all season. Do what you've got. What it's taken to get you in that position. You reinforce all the positives. You're a talented team. You've been playing very well. Let's continue to do what we've been doing. No major differences. Have fun with it. Get this one under your belt. I, I would tell you though, I would be more nervous playing this one at home than I would be away. I would. I think in some cases rather play that first one away because you you can block out the fans. When you're playing at home, it's tougher to block them out. You're aware of it. So uh, I like playing away oftentimes in this situation. Mm -hmm. It's good for the kids, but as a coach, you become very nervous about the possibility, your fans, and there's not going to be many fans from Penwood. That's usually the way it works with this kind of game. There's not many, so you have to worry about your fans. Playing away, you're playing away, so what? You've done it all season, you deal with it. So I. I Try to emphasize the positive and do whatever we did to get here. And, and Joe, they've been playing so well. They it's have just, been. They all really they have. All they have to do is do what they've been doing for the last five or six games, and they can play anybody, Chester included. Speaking of Chester, uh, there's a very distinct possibility that the winner of this game will play the, the Clippers from Chester. Uh, so it should be a thriller. It should be a one heck of a game, two evenly matched teams, the 16th seed against the 17th seed. Um, we'll be back for the opening tip-off and the introduction of the starting lineups right after this very short break. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to Norristown High School. First round of the District 1 playoffs. Penwood against Norristown. We will now stand for the playing of the national anthem and the presentation of the colors by the Norristown Junior ROTC unit. Booing, taunting, and intimidating the officials and opponents is unfriendly and unacceptable, and doing such things will cause you to lose the privilege of being in this chair. At this time, I would ask that you all stand for the presentation of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. Now the starting lineups for tonight's ball game. At this time, it is my pleasure to accept to introduce to you the starting lineups from both teams. 
Wayne Kukera went to my coach by Mr. Rapsai and his assistant. Number three, Shane Johnson. Number three, the point guard, Shane Johnson. Averaging five Number points a game. Eric Number 35, Eric Prentice, the two guard. Number 43, Kyle Finkel. Number 43, Kyle Finkel. Number 50, Ed Millard. 15 points a game. Number 50, their leading scorer, Ed Millard, averaging 23 points a game. And number 52, Bernard Freeman. They're having a rugby scrum at midcourt. Penwood coached by Rap Curry, now former St. Joseph's Norris University Norris. guard. Coach, and now for the Eagles of Norristown. Number one, Brian Arthur. Number one starting for the Eagles, Brian Arthur. And number five, Kenny Witter. Number five, Kenny Witter. Probably the Eagles' best defensive player. Number 10, Willis Carter. Number 10, Eagles all-everything guard, Willis Gardner, number 10. Number 20, Mike Buckley. Number 20, sophomore Mike Buckley. And number 33, Tom Panatowicz. And number 33, big Tom Panatowicz. Starting lineup for the Eagles. We understand the, uh, we're going to be sure one official, uh, he's stuck on the blue route coming here. So the officials tonight will be Mike Gunther and Harry Edwards. An extremely energetic Penwood cheerleading squad. I was Bob. thinking the same <laughs> thing, Joe. <laughs> They came to cheer, that's, that's for sure. That's right. We'll hear them tonight. Have they tried decaf coffee? I, I don't I, think I so, I, Joe. They're, they were fired up since they got off the bus. <laughs> that's nice to see. That's what it's all about, playoff basketball. Everybody's ratcheted up a little bit. All right, here we have Johnson against, I'm sorry, Buckley against Millard. Tap control by the Eagles. It's not, it's not the kind of start you want. Not the you kind miss of start the layup, you want. Joe, and then you miss the, the rebound and the layup. All right. Okay, Shane Johnson. 43 is Kyle Finkel. Bernard Freeman, top of the key. Brian Arthur guarded by number 35, Eric Prentice. Here's Willis Gardner. Jump shot is off the rim. Rebound, Penn Wood. Here's Prentice, down the right wing. Ooh, good move, Joe. Woo! Norristown in a 2-3 zone. Double team, Joe, front and back, and still got the shot. It's not a good start for Norristown. There's a steal. Four nothing, maybe six. He walked. He walked first. He traveled, but he got the basket. All right, six nothing, Penn Wood. Telecast, Joe. I said to you, a little nervous just being at home. And you're saying it, a turnover, missed layup to start it. If you make that shot right from the opening gun, different game. Mike Buckley, turn around, jump shot two. Counted for Mike Buckley. Eagles on the board.
So we'll encourage that then. You see that quick. You double, they actually triple teamed on that one, Joe. Wide open and he didn't hit anything. Here's Willis Gardner. Kenny Witter. Ponatowicz. Great rebound, Tom Ponatowicz. Rebound and score. 6-4 with that nervousness, Joe. All right, Johnson will slow it down. Eagles in that compact 2-3 zone. Surrounding Millard. Finkel on the right wing. Looks to penetrate. Boy, they closed that down really quick, Joe. Rebound, Mike Buckley. Great second and third effort to get that rebound. Great effort, great effort. Eagles can tie it with a basket, 6-4. Good tough rebound by Mike Buckley. Mike Buckley inside. Misses a short yeah, jump shot. Early on the follow too. Here's Kyle Finkel, Patriots' second leading scorer. Finkel. Short shot with the jump blocked, shot. Joe. Partially blocked. Norristown's ball out of bounds. Unrelenting noise from these cheerleaders. Just unrelenting. <laughs> we haven't had that all year. Number that 32. is one hell of a shot. The defensive player's hand was in his face. He had to make the adjustment, shot it left-handed off the glass. Wow. Eagles, Eagles tie the game at six. Brandon Anderson. A sophomore playing like a senior, as we said oh, in the pregame. That was a great play. All right, Brandon can give the Eagles a lead. First lead of the game. And does. Yep. See how easy that was? Shane Johnson flips in a layup. We're on the seesaw, 8-7. Here's Mike Buckley. Oh. Right, here's a foul on Willis Gardner. See what's happened with Mike, though. He's forced to alter his shot. He's shooting it flat or parallel because of number 50. 50. Because of number 50. Yeah. Wasn't 50 the one that blocked the shot earlier? Yeah. Right? All right, Shane Johnson makes the first. 9 7, Penn Wood. Mike may be trying a little too hard. Bobby. Yeah, yeah he's, he's certainly he'll working He'll settle down, hard, he'll right? settle down, absolutely. The first couple minutes, you're yeah. nervous, Joe. Number 42 into the game is John Holt. Number 52, Bernard Freeman out. And Norristown's gone to the bench twice already. Yes. Right? <laughs> Kenny Witter with a rebound. Offensive rebound, Kenny Witter. It does look, Joe, like we're going to be able to get some offensive boards. In fact, several opportunities tonight off the offensive glass. Here's Finkel. Smooth 6-3 shooter. Millard, 19 feet from the basket. They swing the ball, they look inside to Millard. Millard surrounded by Eagles. Good 
call. Good call. Nice play. Buckley made a nice play on that, Joe. Shut down the drive, and he's covering number 50. Penwood having a little problem solving that that shifting 2-3 zone. Over the top, Kenny Witterell draws the foul. What a timing and a verticality with him. Scores down the other end, gets a rebound and a possession on this end. Ten nine, Penwood by a point. Three minutes left to play in the first period. Oh, All right, they threw it away. Turnover, Norristown. You want to hold those things to a minimum. That's our second, Joe. Yeah. Here's Willis to Kenny Witter. Draws a foul, doesn't finish the play, but draws a foul. He'll shoot two. Nice feed from Willis Gardner on the fast break. Norristown going to their third player already on the bench, right? Yeah. Ryan's coming back in. That's the sixth, that's the sixth in close shot the Eagles have missed though. Yes. Witter ties it at 10. Arthur Johnson into the game. Ryan Arthur, Anthony Johnson into the game. Ponitowitz takes a break, as does Brandon Anders. Anthony Johnson, another of Coach Evans' splendid sophomore. Here's Chris Britt. Norristown in a man to man now. No, they still in his own. Here's Big Ed Millard. Number 25. Oh, brother. Anthony Johnson. Another nice play. Rebound, another offensive board. Oh. Garbage time. Number 42, John Holt picks up a. But a Brian loose ball. wasn't there. Brian Arthur was hanging around up top. He should have been cut into the basket. Penwood and Amanda Man. Oh boy, you can see that coming. Yes. Might be in the Norristown's advantage to keep running the court. He's puffing. Yeah. If he's puffing. He's a big us. man. 14, 12. Hands are on his hands are on his thighs, Bob. Yep. He's puffing. Yep. Yes, he's he is. hanging after that shot. Yep. Back in the game, but Ken's out. Yeah. Rebound, Rebound, 14 to 12, Penwood, 128 in the first quarter, Joe. Rebound, Rebound, All right, Eddie Millard drops in the second. It's 15 12, Penwood by three. Willis. Drops in a jump shot. Willis Gardner, top of the key. There's a look up, look up, look up. Willis nice Gardner, play, great Willis. drive. Nice play, that quick. They're back up by one. Gardner, wire to wire with a layup. 49 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Here's 
There's a steal by Gardner. Knocked away over to the numbers. Anthony Johnson. They pull it out. Smart basketball. Here's Mike Buckley inside. Grabbed on the floor. Good. Fourth team foul, Joe. 31 seconds left in the quarter. Three away from that magic number for the rest of the half. So good situation. Binky said that we are very much a carbon copy of each other, and you can see it. That's Finkel's second, that's Finkel's second t uh, foul. Very he's important. Just, he's their second leading scorer, averaging about 15 points a ball game. He sits. Wait for that last shot. Jamal kept it alive. Here's number 35 on the drive, Eric Prentice. Nice play, Jamal Blackwell. Yeah, too fancy on the shot, Joe. Now, play for the last. I think we should have played for the last shot with 30 seconds. Five seconds left to play. Ooh, Willis lost it. Okay, pressure him. Got to pressure him. Got to get up. Two and a half seconds Make left to play. Make him go east and west. First quarter. No, no foul, fellas. Now, that won't count. He didn't get it off in time. Wraps up a cracklingly good first period. Norris down up a point, 16-15. They See, fell behind at first, Bob, and they scratched their way back. I think that, when I said to you about that nervousness, the first couple minutes, how difficult it is, and they're past that now. The shots were flat, they were rushed. See, and oftentimes, it's that first opportunity. We had the chance to score first, you miss the opening layup, and then you start, the rest of the team starts thinking, uh-oh. Open layup, we miss it. And then somebody has to break the ice and score, and, and we're at that point now. But I like Norristown's chances at this point. I know it's a one-point game, but based on what I've seen in this quarter, I like Norristown. I like its depth. I love the way they're controlling the offensive board. Because one of the stats that, that, they, that Jim Suratory gave us pointed out that they're averaging 13 rebounds per game offensive and getting eight points per game out of that, they already have six. Yes, they do. They have six points off the offensive glass. That's 24 for the game if they're able to do that the rest of the game. So that's a big statistic right now. The foul shooting, we're actually shooting less than 58% because I think we're one for two. But we're going to have to shoot fouls and continue to hit the offensive glass. All right, Penwood with four fouls, Norristown with two. Buckley inbounds, the number 32. Brandon Anderson. Gardner on the right wing. Bothered by Shane Johnson. Nice pass. That's great hustle. Great Jamal, hustle. Jamal Blackwell. Great hustle. Lost it, hustled it, and got the ball back. All right, Penwood in his zone. Oh, he was open. He was open. He had a little mismatch. Oh, a little push there. There's going to be a foul. You watch. Number 25, Anthony Johnson. Third official arrived too, Joe. Eagles by three. Millard is drawing a crowd underneath. He had three players, front, back, and side, and still got fouled, got the shot off. What you have to do there, Joe, and it's easier said than done, you have to, you can't allow the guard to make that kind of penetration or the angle to create that pass, because guards are taught they have to see the numbers on the chest to make the pass. And as a defensive guard, you have to deny that angle to make the pass. This young man reminds me of Brazel the other night from, uh, from Coatesville. Same build, same quickness. I think Brazel was quicker off his feet than this guy. I think you're right, Bob. I think you're right. Same build, perhaps, but Brazel was just flat out. He was, he was out jumping Buckley and Winter. Anthony Johnson. Jamal Blanco. I don't think those were two good shots. I know they're good looks, but too early. You weren't set. All right, ball looked like it was.
goes off uh, Penn Wood, but it'll be Penn Wood's ball under their own basket. Got to watch number 50. They look inside. He's tired, Joe. Millard His arms is tired. aren't, he's not posting up. You see, he's standing. He's not even showing he wants the ball. All right, number 35 from the corner, Eric Prentice. 1918, Penn Wood were on the seesaw. The ball from the top of the key. Rims out. Uh oh, uh oh. Number five, that's Rudy Taylor. It was a good shot, tough shot. He wanted to go left. It was cut off and shook it off the glass. Right, Penwood by three. Penwood's going to their bench too, Bob. Oh, number 32. Mike Buckley looks to drive, does drive, spills out again. Mike's shooting into some awful luck. Offensive foul, great play Mike Buckley to draw it. Here's what I don't like about our last three shots, Joe. There was no ball movement, it just went right to the basket for the shot. All right. Mike took a, took a serious hit, drew the offensive foul, paid the price. Now, I'm going to say this, Joe. That's four straight shots we've taken where we just drove to the basket or put the ball on the floor and taken a shot. Willis just did it. It was just done three consecutive times prior to. Got to get back to what we've been doing. Brandon Anderson, Anthony Johnson, Jamal top of the key. Tommy looks to drive. They get it to Willis. Top of the key, Willis Gardner. Jump shot is short. Rebound, Freeman. All right, Penwood up three. Here's Jamal. Nice play, Jamal Blackwell. Great body control. And he just beat, just the defender was just not there in time and good body control on that. You're right, Joe. Good body control. 21-20, Penwood by a point. Four minutes, 43 seconds left to play in the first half. I still, I, Bob, I continue to be amazed by the, by the steady play of our sophomores. Johnson and Anderson. They've been terrific. We're going to need those sophomores. We're going to need the bench tonight for sure. Penwood is a very good team. This is going to be a war tonight for us to be successful. We're going to have to control the ball. We're going to have to get the ball inside to Buckley and Witter. We can't rely on perimeter shots. And we have to stop 50 inside. And that's, that is going to be most difficult. Finky said in the pregame that he's going to be a handle, and he is. He is. We're triple teaming him, and he's still getting shots. I think you have to be inclined to see if the other kids can beat you. Yeah. And because you can't give him those shots inside. And we have to work harder at denying the passing lane and the angle for that. All right, it'll be Penwood's ball. Heck of a game. Mike Buckley's back. Three's back in the game for them too, Joe. Yep. That's Finkel, Kyle Finkel. See, that's what gives them a tough combination. When he's on the court, he has the ability to penetrate, take the jumper. He just took it and got fouled. 
and let them get the ball inside. All right, that's, that's Willis' the second foul. Kyle Finkel, he'll shoot two. Shot was pretty flat, Joe. That was very flat. And his jump shot was flat, too. That was hard. Uh, 52. Bernard Freeman, somebody's got to put a body on that man. And we didn't. We didn't, Joe. Here's Tommy inside Tom Panatowicz. That's a nice pass, Joe. Set him up, made a great pass inside. Tom finishes. 23 22. Here's Finkel. Guarded by Anthony Johnson. Picked up by Tom Panatowicz. don't Panatowicz. want that matchup. Here's Millard, guarded by Buckley. Joe, nothing I was about can, to say he forced that, about that shot. He forced it and still made it. Can't do anything about that. Right, Give the shot it off for one foot as a fadeaway. Still made it. Here's Brandon Anderson. Good luck. Good pass, Tom. Thank you. Partially blocked. Picked up by Willis Gardner. Out to Anthony Johnson, into Tom. Mike nice Buckley, score. finally. Mike Tom Buckley. Bonitowicz has got a great game so far. Four points, got an assist on that, and he's got at least three offensive rebounds. Mike Buckley, tough layup inside, off a great pass. All right, number 25, Anthony Johnson. Kyle Johnson, the second, two, six. Look at the number of guys across from us, Joe, that are coming into the game. There's five, we don't yes. usually see that. There's five guys coming in, That's three right. for Penwood and two for us. Right. One deficiency so far for Penwood. They, they're having a tough time on the foul line. I hope the deficiency continues for another 16 plus minutes. I'm right with you, Joe. It's, it's, we're not getting to the line, country. They're getting to the line a lot. What do you have, Joe? How many times do we have been to the line? What do you have? I have us twice. twice. Two shots. Yeah, two shots. Two shots. One out of two. Here's Brian Arthur. Jump shot. Short. Buckley with a tough rebound and he's fouled. Good. 16 foul. Foul was on the floor. Next, next foul, Norristown will shoot a one and one. They swing the ball. Oh my goodness, what a great play. We're not standing around, good ball movement, good player movement, one complements the other. We're tied at 26. Here's Shane Johnson, fouled by Tom Panatowicz. 52's been a factor in this game for them, Joe, with some boards and some putbacks. And, and two block shots. Well. Twenty-six, twenty-six, two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. I know they need to correct the team fouls for guests. Yeah. yeah. What a, what a ferocious battle under the boards, Bob, for that ball. Willis broke it loose, 
hit Jamal, driving for a, uh, a layup. Jamal was fouled. But Willis set that up after he got it. He drew the guard, made a tough pass, and gave him enough time to get some steam to go to the basket. Uh, he just does so much, and he reads so well. So much of it is giving it to your teammate in the proper time and location and spacing. Set him up for a nice situation. Now we have to finish on the line, Joe. All right, we're one for three. Here's Jamal going to shoot the second. 26-26. Oh, 26-26. Mike Buckley inside. Mike Buckley again. Key. Make the negative of a There's steal. A steal. Another one. Yes. Penny winner yes. with a steal and a yes. putback. Four point lead. Less than two. We got a timeout. Yes. Kenny Witter with those quick magic hands stole the ball. Gave Norristown a four point lead. 30 to 26. Two minutes left to play in the first half. But you certainly know this isn't going to be the case because Penwood is a good team. They're going to come back. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to see some swings like this. And we're probably going to see Norristown do a couple of these things too because Penwood does press and, and we'll have some lapses. But it, it's a nice way to end the half if we can sustain it. Yes. Play defense here. You got a four point lead, but we'll see where we are in a minute 57 seconds. Coach wasn't happy with what he just saw. No. He was off the bench like a rocket, called the, called the timeout. Witter simply stripped the ball from number three, Shane Johnson. Picked his pocket. Almost another steal, almost another one there. Thirty to twenty-eight. A minute forty-two left to play in the first half. Two, three. Okay. Willis directing traffic. set. Mike, bingo, 15-foot jump shot, Mike Buckley. Did you see the ball movement and the swinging of the ball and the rotation? It was just great. Oh, Willis, if you turn. He traveled. Number five, that's Rudy Taylor. Took too many steps, 32-28, a minute nine left to play. Buckley, 15 foot, bingo, Mike Buckley, two straight jump shots. Mike certainly is a nervous. Not Whoa. now, Whoa. not now. Almost another turnover. Still may get another turnover. We got another turnover. Great Mike play, Buck keeping the ball in bounds. He would have been out of bounds, Joe. Play for the last. Play for the last. 36. Go up eight or six. Left to play. Mike Buckley. Bring it out. Bring it out. Make him come out. Just tremendous play on the part of Mike Buckley. Bring it out. Willis, left wing. Long with a jump shot. See, I, I don't think that's the right decision. <laughs> Joe, you see, you see where I'm coming from? We had 18 seconds left on the clock. Why not play with it and go in with the last shot instead of now, instead of a six or eight point lead, this could be four. Why not hold it for 17 seconds? Why would you shoot it? You risk the foul. Now, you still may make this a positive. If he misses these two shots, you're going to get the ball. Down the five. You may still go back up six if he can bring it down and score. 34-29. Norristown by five. I just don't think you want to do that. Willis took the shot. Now that's off. Brandon Anderson. Kenny Witter just rolled off the rim. Six seconds. All right, that'll end the first half. 
Great defensive play to stop that basket on the part of Penn Wood. 34-29, Norristown with a five-point lead in just a, just a, a ter terrifically well-played basketball game, Bob. Yeah, I was going to say to you, Joe, how fast this game has gone. It's 7.30, and the first half is done. There's, <laughs> the game has gone at such a quick pace. Both teams are in the one on one, but it doesn't even seem like there's been that many fouls. Norristown's been like in line Bob, for three shots. Doesn't it seem like, Bob, that, that the better the basketball, the faster the game seems to go? Absolutely. And you can tell the coaching on both teams yeah. is solid. The play has been very good. Oh, my God. Mike Buckley has been outstanding. Yes, Penn Witter has been outstanding. Yes, they, yes, uh, they both 54, have. 54. Penwood has been very good. This is an incredible game, and, and the numbers of people has jumped quite a bit, right, Joe? There's it's good a to see. Crowd behind us, and certainly a good crowd in, on the front of us. Yes. Yep. Penn would have brought a nice contingent. Uh, the Norristown stands are filling up, which is nice to see. They're gonna they're gonna definitely see 16 more minutes of, of first rate. PIAA Quad A basketball. And we'll be back to bring those last 16 minutes to you right after this short break. Welcome back to the second half. Tonight's game between Norristown and Penn Wood. 34 29, the Eagles. Eagles got behind early in the first half. They came back. They lost the lead again. They came back again on the great play of sophomore Mike Buckley, offensively and defensively. He hit two jump shots. Gardner made some timely steals. Witter made a timely steal. The Eagles have scratched out a five-point lead, 34-29. They've only been to the line three times. They've made one. Uh, Bob, as you said at the end of the first half, they, got, they, they have to get to the line more, and they do that by Go into the basket, correct? Got to penetrate. Push the ball up the court and you have to penetrate. And it's not, Joe, if, if we had access to the shot chart, I'm certain, I'm certain it would indicate that Norristown has taken a lot of their shots inside. We've missed a lot of shots, but they've been primarily off of rebounds. You'd like to see that penetration. Okay, here we go, second hand. Turnover, turnover. First possession score, right, Joe? Yep. See what we do here. Finkel lost the ball out of bounds. Possession arrow favors the Eagles. Jump ball. Tom wasn't happy with the call, but <laughs> I think it was the right call on that. He got the shot blocked. They set up the offense. Willis Gardner, 15-foot jump shot. Count it, Willis Gardner. First score of the second half, Bob. That's right. That's a nice way to start. First team. Oh, brother. You don't want to see him to get really focused or upset, do you? I mean, he just decided he's going to the basket. All right, number 33, Tommy P, picks up the foul. That's, just, that's Tommy's second. Now, the last time on this, Joe, he screened away and came back for the ball. Yeah, you did you don't want to get 50 angry. You don't want him to get. He looked angry on that last play. <laughs> um, I got I got to think he's he's doing a little bit of coming over the top. He might be, but I'm just looking at, at Buckley and Witter and Tom. All <laughs> and he's still getting up over them and getting the shot. He is one strong guy inside. 
Thirty-six thirty. Thirty-six thirty. That's a good All thing. Right. Tom would have lost it. All right, Tommy will shoot a pair. No, he'll shoot. I think it's on the floor. It's on the floor. He won't shoot. Willis again, he missed the shot, got his hand on it, we still got the possession. Ball knocked out of bound by Finkel, Kyle Finkel, number 43. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a nice situation, they pick up a second foul, just like that, Joe. Ooh, 35 third too, Joe. Yep, Eric Prentice, he's a starter. They swing the ball. Oh, great bank shot, Willis Gardner. Great body control. Biggest lead of the game at 635, 3830. All right, here's Shane Johnson. Brian Arthur working hard on defense. Here's a steal. Guess who? Gardner leads the break. Feet inside, Kenny Witter. Too nice easy, shot. Joe. Too easy, though. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, that's a foul in any league. That's Prentice's fourth. He'll sit for a while. Big foul. Oh, his fourth. That was, that was a no-brainer. He pushed off. He got beaten, pushed off. Here's Tommy P. There, there was a hole there. Uh, steal. All right, Tommy recovered well, hustled back, stopped the layup. You know, so it, if you're going to foul on that play, Bob, you got to make sure he doesn't make the shot. Right. You don't want to make it a three point opportunity. You're going to make a decision. You either let him take it or you foul him and don't give him, make him earn it. The way they're shooting on the line, this could be a good situation. Well, nope, so far. But my point prior to that, Joe, was 52 or 50 was all over Tom. He literally wrapped his arms around him. That should have been a foul. He got frustrated and turned it over. All right, 544 left. Oh, it's 50. That boy is a monster. 50 is a monster, an absolute monster. How did Willis come down with that shot? Brian Arthur, short with a jump shot. Kenny Witter draws a foul. Work, work, work on the offensive board. Kenny Witter, and he gets, he'll get two out of it. And Willis penetrated, missed it, got the rebound, stayed with it. Great effort. Yeah. Great effort, Joe. All right, Kenny to shoot two. The Eagles one for three from the line so far. And that eight-point lead dropped to three that quick. Back up the court. That quick, Joe. Turnover, three-point play. Finkel and Millard. Finkel and Millard, Bob. Mm -hmm. and Tom came out right after that turnover. All right, Kenny Witter drops in two, 40-35. Uh, here's Finkel. Stops and hits the jump shot. 43 again, Joe. A foul there. I'm telling you, you can't touch. They're leaning. That's his third, right? Yep. Yep, it's Johnson's third. Now go at him again. with a 
that floater, that patented shot. Boy, that he does have that one, Joe. Five point lead again, Joe. Here's Winter with the steal. Four-point four turnaround. Point turnaround yep. Joe, and it was sloppy. It was sloppy. Really tough man-to-man -man defense. And one. Mike Buckley drives the lane, drops in a jump shot, and draws a foul. That's really tough man-to-man -to -man defense, Bob, that they're playing. Yes, and Coach is going to call timeout. Now, Willis has got his hands on the side. See it? That last play that we turned it over, Willis was not part of it. We turned it over. Willis has to keep handling the ball. All right, four minutes left to play in the third period. I'll tell you, of all the cheerleading squads we've seen this year, Penwood is the most energetic. They are also most the, active. Also the, also the most, the loudest and the most distracting. We can't even see the court. Well, they're having fun with each other. Yes, they are. Going out smiling. Yes, they are. A couple of our cheerleaders complained to me. She said, they're so active. I said, well, what's that tell you? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the whole idea, right? right. They're called cheer leaders. Right. right. I, I don't think she was too happy with me. I said they're very energetic. They're very animated. They're making a lot of noise. Come on. All right. Mike Buckley on the line, shooting one, trying to finish a three-point play. And does not, and oh, does. does. All right, Norristown in a man-to-man. Good -man. move, Joe, good move. Put some more pressure on. Got a six-point lead. Make him earn it, make him earn it. See now, see where 50 got the ball? That's fine, let That's him have it out want. there. Yeah. That's where you want him to get it. That's exactly what you want. As long as he doesn't get it back there unless you have help. Mike Buckley with the rebound. Two on two. Looks to drive. Drops in a layup. Did you see how he became a guard? He got the ball nice and low. Very low to the floor to protect it. Awesome play. Eight point lead, the biggest so far. 319 left in the third quarter. Willis almost stole it. That's 42, Johnny Holt. I just wish we wouldn't give up that easy shot after a nice play to give up an easy basket. Here's Jamal Blackwell on the right wing. They, they swing the ball. Short with a jump shot. Here's Buckley. Nothing, nothing. Pull it back. Three on one doesn't work. Just a great basketball game. Six point spread, 222 in the third quarter. Here's Anthony Johnson in the game. Steal by the big guy, Eddie Millard. Turnover. out of bounds. Brandon Anderson, a great defensive play to knock the ball against number five, Rudy Taylor, and he lost it. It'll be the Ryan Eagles Arthur's ball. Right, Willis is out. Might be a little winded. I told you, he's been holding his side a little bit last minute. All right, let's see what the Eagles can do without their, their leader, at least temporarily. Oh, Jamal, you don't want to do that. Got into a pushing match with the guy. You All lose right. the possession and the foul. All right, that's Jamal's first. Two minutes.
minutes left to play. Finkel, jump shot. Rims out. Good, good for Blackwell. All right, it'll be, it's off Penwood. Good officiating, Joe. Terrific. Good officiating, they're on top of it, and nobody's arguing with the call, so they must be right. A minute 40. Yes, 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 yes. Here's a nice situation, Joe. Yep. We're going to be in a bonus for the next nine minutes and 36 seconds. Push the ball up court, work it inside. 43 has three, three has four, right? Yep. All right, Mike, Michael will be on the line shooting one and one. Minute 30 left to play. Finkel. He's a dangerous. Oh, jump he walked. Ball. No, he yes, walked. Yes. Travel. Right, travel. Nice play. Nice play defense. All right, Tom's Willis. in. Willis is back in. Mike sits. Brian sits. See the bench, Joe? Yep. The bench again. Great rotation. Great rotation off that bench. Three almost picked it up again. Nice defensive play, Anthony Johnson. It's not there, Willis. It's not there. That Bingo, is the, number 32, that is. Brandon Anderson. Back up to an eight point lead. Now don't give him an easy basket. See, I think, I think that's a good call. Tom has to stand there and not reach. What he did was reach for the ball and you pick up the foul. If you stand there, it's gonna be an offensive foul. All right, the big guy will be shooting two. This is Eddie Millard, averaging 23 points a game for the Patriots. Tough one, Joe. 49-42, 46 seconds. I believe that our bench is much stronger than their bench. If three continues, if he picks up that next foul, or if 43 picks it up, they're gonna be bench time. All right, it's 46 seconds left. You wanna take this lead into the fourth period. I think you pull it out and hold it for the last 30 I seconds. I agree, I agree, but. Uh, See, I, 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 that's twice now we've done this and it frustrates me. Pull it out, you're in a bonus. Why do you need to do it? Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's not a good match. Too easy, Joe. 49-45, six seconds left, five, jump shot. Joe, no, that's two quarters, I think we've done the same thing and it's cost us opportunity. I, I, maybe it's a conservative part of me, but I'd rather go in with six and potentially eight and play for the last shot then take the shot or risk a turnover and have them score and or foul. And that's two consecutive quarters in a four point game, Joe. I, I agree, I agree. I don't know what we're thinking or why the guard isn't saying pull it up. 
Now they scored out of that, right? Yeah, no, they did not. They, did they not. didn't score, but but Norristown didn't either. All right, eight minutes left to play in this game. Hmm. They did. Oh, Turnover, yeah, the and the big, the big guy, guy scored. Yeah. It was big six, guy. the big That's guy right. scored. Because I said Tom was too easy. But what about the second quarter? I don't remember if they scored out of that. I know we took the shot. I think they scored out of that one, too. This is, this is going to be those cardiac jobs. The oh, there's so. no doubt about it. There's, there's not, nothing's, nothing's easy at the, this time of the year. So Penwood Pen picked up a point in the quarter. Yes. Penwood is a legitimately strong team. They play, as, as the, the nice point that you made, Bob, they play in an in a extremely competitive conference, including Glenn Mills and Chester. But they are a good, good ball club. They're well coached, too. Their coach is very willing to take timeouts, and that lead changes a couple. All right, the Eagles are packing their defense. All right. Block shot, block shot. Kenny Witter with a Here rebound. <laughs> Brandon Anderson, Kenny Witter, looks to drive. Almost pull the trigger. Willis again. Willis Gardner with a floater off the rim. Here's Finkel. They pump it inside to the big guy. Oh boy, it'll Almost. be a technical time. Yeah. Tim, Tim. I think. I think it crossed his mind to well, give the I young man so. a T. You can't, you can't keep saying stuff like that to the official. You can't embarrass the official like that. You just can't do it. This is where the one-on-one, -on -one, Joe, is so important. You have eight minutes of it. All right, here's Brandon Anderson. Five-point Norristown lead. I have it's unofficially five for eight. That's what I have too, Bob. All right. Seven minutes, five seconds left. Here's Finkel. Too easy. Got the baseline. Drove the baseline. Three-point lead. There's Willis snuck That's under. foul on number three. That should be number four, I believe, correct? Foul's on number, number three, Shane Johnson. That is his fourth foul. And we're going to be in a two-shot situation the next foul. Joe, 639. 51. Yeah, he did. Makes them, makes them both. Two big shots. Too easy. They're getting those layups, Joe. It's too easy. He's a load. He's just a load to handle. Three point Norristown lead. Six minutes left to play in the fourth period. Number 32, Brandon Anderson, a sophomore playing like a senior. All right, turnovers, turnovers, foul shots, turnovers. All right, timeout, Penwood. 
See, this is the part I like about the coach from Penwood. Couple points, couple changes. He's quick to time out. Talk thing. He doesn't allow momentum to shift either way. He quickly stops the momentum. Well, Joe, here, right? We have. We're in a bonus for the remaining 552. Yes. Got to get the ball inside. Have to make foul shots. Have to control the ball. Minimize the turnovers. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do to stop 50. That's a serious problem because he, about, he just scores at will. How about a nice baseball bat? <laughs> and, and my, that might not work. He is such a strong He's a kid. strong young man, I'll tell you, and quick. When you play man, if you pressure the guard, he comes up high, but then he comes back and gets the ball back in the low yeah. post. One-on-one, yeah. -on -one, you're not going to match up. We're right. struggling with two and three kids on him. 43 or 42, is it 42? 43 has not been that much of a factor offensively. He's below his average. Yes. Um, and three has four fouls. That's a player you definitely want to see pick up the fifth and get him out. All right, five point lead, Penwood's ball. No, I'm sorry, it's Norristown's ball. Norristown's ball. That's right, that was a errant pass. Eagles ball out of bounds. Nice move, nice move. I love the way we're, we're, you're looking, it's not there, you pull it out, the patience. Willis Gardner drives the lane and drops in a pair. 56-49 Eagles. Senior leadership, Joe, at the point yet. They look. Uh-oh. What do you do? I mean, what, what do you do with that kid? What can there are you find? three guys there. What we did was gave up baseline. Can't give up baseline, but three guys were on him and he still scored easily. Five point game, fans 56 51, 450. Oh, Willis Gardner inside against the big guy. Yes. He didn't use the backboard, and I don't think he could have used it. If he'd gone to the backboard on that, it would have been blocked. You know, Binky said to me prior to the game, not only is number 50 their first option, he is their second and third option. I can see and that. There it is, right there. Everything focuses around him. I guarantee you, Bob. Every time down the floor, they will try to pump it into 50. Because the only he's thing been we can side. hope is he gets tired. Because he's, he's breathing a little heavy right now. You got to run the court, see if you can make him tired. I missed the foul shot. Maybe that's a fatigue shot, Joe. The one thing that, that is a little disappointing about the young man, he is a bit of a whiner, a bit of a complainer. He has been. Now just play the game, son. All right, he drops in the second. 58-52, a six-point lead. Uh oh, uh oh. Norristown calls a timeout. 421. Good job. The the chess game continues, coach against coach. And. You know, I, I know Mike has several timeouts yet, and that's what you want. Now, you, this may be for a variety of reasons, right? One of those may be give everybody a little bit of time to relax, recharge. You want to go over some things. In this situation, I might have called the timeout and said, look, just take a breather. Yeah. Our possession, let's know what we're doing the last four minutes and 20 seconds. You've got a six-point lead. You're in a two-shot situation the rest of the game. You want to take advantage of it, and you want to avoid committing that seventh foul possible, although that's going to be tough with number 50. Oh, 
you would feel better, Joe, if we were on the court with the cheerleaders. That close, I would, right? I would, I would feel better if the Eagles had about a 26-point lead. I, I feel better. Jeez. Oh, I, you know this is going down to the wires. Six points in this game could be up in seconds. Oh, and absolutely. Now that they're pressing, they they have Willis trapped in the corner. He's able to get out of it, but. Phew. Well, you can't get a better you can't get a better high school basketball game than this. No, this is a long timeout. This must be a TV timeout. 58-52 on the Conicelli scoreboard. Oh my goodness. Our possession. See what we do the last 420. Turnovers and foul shots. We'll see. Four underclassmen on the court right now for Norristown. Four underclassmen. Mike Buckley. This is the jump shot. Could have been a foul though, right, Joe? Number 52, Bernard Freeman. He has not taken many shots, but they've been good ones. Beautiful pass inside. Willis Gardner to Kenny Witter. Gets a shot block, comes right back with the assist. Three and Six and a half. point game. Turnover. Turnover. Willis yes. Gardner with a pickup. Get it back. Willis, get it back. Oh my word. Oh my word. What a shot. Jump ball. Unbelievable shot. That Coaches won't encourage that or teach it, but it's one hell of a shot. That's the highlight film, and that's it for the season on that shot. <laughs> and look, the fans have got into the game. They forced a turnover out of it. It's an eight-point lead with 3.04. You're in the driver's seat. All right, Michael to inbound. Brandon Anderson, nice low to the ground dribble. Willis, Willis, you don't want that. Here comes don't the make big it guy. easy. Defense! Rebound, Buckley. Defense! They're going to put a lot more pressure. Yeah, on. they're going to they're going to ratchet it up. Here's Kenny Witter. Defense! Number 25, Anthony Johnson. Great pass, Kenny Witter. Two and a half minutes left to play. Norristown calls a timeout. I love it. I love it, Joe. Coaching, 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 coaching. Timeout. Let them know what you want with two minutes, 24 seconds left in the game. You're in a bonus situation. Unbelievable. You're in control of your game right now. Great timeout. Let them know what they have to do. The Eagles are not only maintaining a lead, they're increasing the lead. And I, I repeat again. There are four underclassmen on the floor. And they're doing a super job. Willis has been a catalyst for what's going yep. on, but everybody has shared in the load. And the team play, the bench, and the unselfishness has been a key ingredient again tonight. If you have it, you don't, you don't lose it, and if you haven't had it, you're not going to get it in playoffs. Right. This team has had it all season, and it's going to allow them to go to the next round. All right, it's a 10-point Norristown lead. Uh, Willis forced that. Willis forced that. Willis forced that. He tried to go through the trap. That's what you don't want. The right. foul and the shots and the clock. All right. 
219 left to play. Finkel will shoot one and one. See, two seconds expired on that clock. Uh, see, now the heart rate's back up. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You can't, Joe, you can't do that. Two seconds and put them on the line. You stop the clock. All right, Finkel makes them both. Oh. They're across the 10 second line, barely. Oh, that's, we'll take that, we'll take that. Two shot foul, now you have to make them. All right, Anthony Johnson. He's been good on the line, Joe. He and Anderson have been terrific on the line. Hey, see what coach is doing. It, it, great stuff. On defense, he's putting his non-starters in. On offense, he's got his starters coming back in. All right, Anthony misses the first. He'll get a second. Anthony's got to make this one. They got to make their fouls. Has to make this one, Joe. Yeah. Have to make this. Yeah. Deep breath. This is them both. This isn't going to be under, easy, Joe. Under two minutes, you know, and right, it's not going to be easy. Finkel drains a three and it's down five to five. Lead. Five point lead. One thirty seven left to play. And I Joe, believe these are big. Yeah, big these are big. big. Because that's five unanswered points, yeah. Joe. Yeah. The, the two foul shots, uh, actually five points by Finkel. The two foul shots and the three. Come on, Go All right. Big, big, big you know foul shot. No doubt. With 137, seven point lead is a lot different than five. Yeah. It is. And the way they put points on the board. Make some votes. 66-59, a minute and a half that's left it, to play. That's it, put some pressure, make them use some clock. Hands, get your hands up. Uh, I don't think we helped ourselves enough there, Joe, because we did use our hands to shrink the lane. Here we go, you see what he's doing again? They're gonna foul. He's got three guys coming in, they're gonna foul, and then on the next dead ball, Offensively, help 50 back in. Three's out. Doing a good job of coaching. Yeah. He knows what he's doing here. Millard will shoot two. Six point game, 127. Penwood is changing their players so they can put them in a foul situation and then put them back in on offense after the foul. They walked. Turnover, it's better than a foul. Yeah. This, this last 119 is going to be a long time, Joe. Yep. Penwood, they're not going to go away. Yes, Willis Gardner, great play, smart. Big turnover number 43. See, Mike and staff deserve credit for that because they put pressure on to try and squeeze the clock and they did a great job. A minute 17 left to play in this exceptional basketball game. Oh, the coach isn't happy. I'm not sure why he isn't happy on that though. He had the foul, there's 116. Yeah. Uh, 
although that may not be the person you want to foul. Yeah. All right, Willis will shoot two. No. Yes. You hurried that, Joe. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Three and 50, you're back in. Five point lead, 67 62, 116 left game. Six Make them point. That's it. That's it. Make them, make them work the clock. Nothing free. Oh, my word. Inside, outside. You can't have many timeouts left, Joe. And you know, that wasn't like we didn't play defense. We were there playing there. defense. Only a the strategy's working for him, Joe. Yeah. It's a three. It's a three-point game. And there's a lot of clock. They oh, keep fouling. We have to make foul shots. There's an eternity left. As Butch said to Sundance, they're starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> I don't think we've had a quiet moment on a dead ball in this game. That's, wow. They, they certainly get their money's worth. Boy. Well, heart rate's back up again, Joe. It's, it is it's back up. Unbelievable. 68, unbelievable. 65, 104. Now he's keeping 50 in the game, 43's in, and it's three out, three's out. Good move, good move, good move. 57 seconds left to play. I don't know why he would complain about that. He grabbed the shirt. Yeah. The, the plus is we knocked off 10 seconds on the clock, but. Willis has to make both of them again. All right. Here's Willis Gardner. Three's back in the game. Yes. Drives it back up to four. And we've made five in a row, Joe. Six coming up. We had it. Uh oh. 50 uh -oh. seconds left to play. Sixty-nine, sixty-seven. They call a timeout a smart timeout. Good call. Viewers, here's what we have. 36 seconds left. Norristown wind ball off the side in the backcourt. It is 69-67, and Penwood's strategy has been working. They have been fouling, putting us to the line. We haven't been able to make all the foul shots. They've been able to come down and score layups, and essentially it's number 43, Joe, and 50 inside. So 36 seconds, they're going to foul us. We have to make both of them. Gotta make shots. the shots, as simple we as that. have to make both of them. Yep. One doesn't make it. Over the over the season, the Eagles only made 58% of their free throws. They were 254 for 439. All right. A 10-point lead has shriveled to two. We're almost shooting season average on the line, Joe, 65%. Yes. See, they're just, they only lost a second on the clock on that. All right, it all, it, 
it comes down to these foul shots, Bob. You that's call where it. it's going to be. They're going to foul, and that's the M.O., and it's been working. A 10-point lead is now down to two. Willis has to make both. That's the bottom line here. He's, he's fading away from the basket, Joe. All right. Willis can give the Eagles a three-point lead and does. 34 seconds left, 34 fateful seconds. Here comes Finkel. Johnson, they swing the ball. 70 to 69. We gambled, Joe, we gambled. Now if you're Willis, you gotta be feeling good. You've made three of your last four the money players on the line, a three-point game. I, I thought it was a one-point game, Bob. Well, he made both of those foul shots, right? Took it back up to five, right? All right, I think right. it's right. Yeah. It's a two-point game. Uh-oh, they're checking yeah, it's something here. Two-point game, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. 69-67, yeah. It's one. Tie game. Is it tie? No, it's not tie. It's not tie. It's, Norristown has a one point lead. They better, that's right, now they got it right. Joe, one isn't enough here. Seventy-one sixty-nine. Gardner drains a foul shot. 72-69, Gardner drains a foul shot. 15 seconds left to play. Now, 43 on the three, or you have to watch 50 on the three. Oh, yeah. He gets it inside, don't foul him. 15, 14. Stay in front of him. Stay in front of him. Three seconds it. left. Got we got it. We got it. They got it inside. Millard missed two short shots. Anderson came away with the ball. And the Eagles are gonna win this ball game. The Norristown Eagles are gonna win this ball game. 72, at least 72 to 69. What a ball game. What a ball game. Millard missed two inside. I'm not sure why he was looking. He was trying to set up to take a three. Right. He they tried, wouldn't let him. Right. Buckley came out and didn't but let him take the three. He should have gone to 43. You still could have worked it inside to him and see if he could have got a three-point play out of it. You can get it either way from 43 on the perimeter. You didn't want him taking that shot. All right, Penwood's What's going Pen on over here? Something happened. All right, here's Brandon Anderson. The Iceman ices the game. Brandon Anderson has been sinking clutch foul shots the entire season. Norristown's going to win it. <laughs> That'll do it. Norristown, 74, Penwood, 69 and just a great high school basketball game. What can you say other than we just saw a superb high school basketball game? Norristown and Penwood clubbed each other like heavyweight contenders. Norristown coming away with a five, a five point win against a very, very tough, very, very rugged Penwood team. Ed Millard is everything they say. Kyle Finkel is everything they say, but 
Willis Gardner and Brandon Anderson and Mike Buckley are everything they say as well, along with Kenny Witter and Brian Arthur, the entire Norristown team. A great team effort, triggered, spark, led by number 10, Willis Gardner. Well, Joe, we're going to come back to what we've been echoing the last couple weeks. Norristown's bench won the game. Absolutely. Once again, the bench comes off and scores. They, they don't give up points. They put on points on the board. It's a great job with that bench, and as you keep pointing out, it's a young team. We made our last five foul shots, Joe. And in, in this game, when you win it by five, the last five shots are critical. We made them. Great coaching on both teams. Oh, yeah. Certainly the coach from Penwood did a great job the last for a 10-point game down to a one-point game. Yep. Okay, so both teams have done a great job with the coaching, but it came down to the foul shots, the lack of turnovers for Norristown at the end of the game, a couple turnovers for Penwood at the end of the game, that shot, that crazy shot that uh, who took it? It was, I think it was Anderson. Anderson who took that shot. That's the highlight film of the yeah. game. Incredible, incredible. And it's been the same thing all year. The teamwork, playing as a team, moving the ball, unselfishness. It's just an incredible game. And I know my heart rate's flying. I can just about talk. I'm so excited wow. about what's happened and, and success. And Willis Gardner, as you pointed out, again, another great game from Willis Gardner. Foul shots at the end, wanting the ball at the end, just like just like the Sheltonham game, yes. wanting it at the very end. Awesome game, people. That uh, that last play, uh, when uh, Penwood had the ball, they wanted to get the ball to 50. 50 came out beyond the arc, and Buckley wisely came out with him and prevented him from taking that three-point shot. Consequently, he was forced to drive into traffic. He missed two layups. Johnson came away with the rebound, and that was the ball game. That was the ball game, and uh, it was it was uh, just a great way to end uh, our broadcast season because I think that this will probably be our last it will be our last broadcast. Uh, Norristown got a home game in the playoffs. We were privileged to uh, broadcast it. This game, as we were privileged to broadcast the games throughout the season, it's been a it's been a lot of fun to watch these boys grow and mature and watch uh, uh, Coach uh, Evans and Coach Johnson work with these kids, uh, developing not a five-man uh, roster, but an bench, entire 12-man roster. That bench roster. is so that important. bench has been a great uh, contribution uh, throughout this season, and tonight was absolutely no exception. The sophomores, again, played like seniors, and the senior, the senior Willis Gardner was, was Willis Gardner. Yes. Uh, I would imagine you're going to give the final... So I would like to once again thank the Conicelli dealerships. Uh, we've been remiss in saying anything at least before halftime, but once again, like to thank Mr. Conicelli and staff for the scoreboards and for all they've done for Norristown High School in recent years, and would certainly recommend and endorse continued sponsorship and, and support by our people uh, with the Hondas and Toyotas and Mitsubishis and Nissan. So please check them out, Mike and Mark Hammond, uh, Rich Pike, Concha Hawken, and uh, we, again, appreciate all they've done for this high school and hopefully will continue to do for us in the future. As I mentioned in the last broadcast, uh, uh, I'm a very satisfied customer. Uh, they, they, they sell a quality product and they're a good corporate neighbor for the entire community. So hopefully we'll see you again next year, God willing. Uh, Bob, I look forward to next year. Hopefully you'll be around. It's a great jest, Joe, hopefully. It, but it's just a great way to end this season. It is. You know, it, it's 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 how they played. It's the way this team has played all season. It, it's a highlight film for us as, as commentators. And certainly these kids are the beneficiaries of what they put into it. And the coaching staff has done an awesome job. Mike and Binky and the rest of the crew, that's a collective coach of the year from what we've seen. All right, for Athletic Director Joseph Fabrizio, for trainer Dennis Flynn, for Coach Mike Evans and Binky Johnson, uh, for the uh, Norristown Eagles, for my good friend and colleague Bob Koch, this is Joe Hyland saying good night and good luck.